Hey everybody. Well, let me see if I can get around the camera now that I've set it up. Uh, it's tight. Um, this is why I haven't been recording much. I've got the wire run into the office and I have one outlet up on a wall and I switched to 14 gauge, some thinner lighter wire I've got here because I just can't work with this heavy duty 12 gauge stuff as well and I happen to have 15 foot of 14 gauge so I'm going to run that along over to the other socket in the office. And I'm putting these up higher because in the office I've got a lot of stuff down the floor level all the time. So I want these outlets off the ground so they don't get bumped and ripped up. Now the part that I hate, I, don't, I have great respect for electricians because boy this stuff is stiff. <clears throat> and this time I, I uh, wired the outlet with the outlet off the wall. So I fed the wires in, I had it on my lap, uh, I put the conduit uh, thing on here, whatever it's called, and I connected the wires to the outlet with the whole thing disconnected from the wall, and then I screwed it to the wall, and now I've got to attempt to get this jammed into place, which is not fun, and I just don't know how these people do it, the electricians, because this is really stiff wire, and it really resists me. It's really hard to deal with, and I didn't even have that much in here this time, like I did with the last outlet in the kitchen. But boy, it fights me. It fights me hard, and it resists going where I want it to go. Oh, great, and then I chose one that doesn't have the... Oh, isn't it weird? Now, when I shopped, I thought I made sure I had all the wires. Now, of course, I don't have the, uh, or the screws. I don't have the screw on this one. I've got to go get a screw off one of those outlets downstairs. I'll have to come back. Ah, funny that, huh? Now that I decide to record, I don't even have the uh, the outlets missing a screw. Okay, I got a screw off of another outlet downstairs. So, and put this together. I can't believe that. I, I, I extra checked. I don't know how it got uh, lost or I guess I wasn't paying attention well enough or what. But that was missing. even have those retainer clips but it was gone okay now need a bigger screwdriver head that's the bigger I got okay hopefully I can push this wire into submission and get in there and stay in place now eventually I'm going to be pro uh, properly finishing off the walls in here. Well, that's not a big deal just to remove the outlet, put up the paneling, and put the outlet back down. I'm not worried about that at all. Right now though, I need power. I'm tired of not having power in a tiny house on wheels. We've been running an extension cord from the inverter in here since day one. tiny house on wheels make sure everything's still in place the screws haven't or the wires haven't broke off which I had happen uh, downstairs in the kitchen one of my wires broke off on me and that's not cool and then the trim cover plate now we've got a very pretty outlet on here obviously then I just have to hide the wires in a conduit and we're done. I'll get some staples and I'll put them up there. Uh, staple them in place along the way. 
so they're neat and they're out of the way. Now, I've got, it says it's 15 feet of wire, it doesn't look like much. Um, you won't be able to see what I'm doing next, but I'm going to run the wire down on the floor over and up to the wall over here about this height again where I'm going to have another outlet in the uh, um, in the office so we'll be back in a few minutes maybe I'll try to get you an angle of that once I'm running it hey everybody wiring up the uh, last outlet in the office I don't know if you can see anything because it's just a wire hanging down right now, but I've got the outlet box which is going to go up in the wall here. I've got the wires here. I prepped them and I'm about to fasten this all together. Oops, I want that wire, that plug, or blah. So, black is the colored. I'm using the 14 gauge wire that I happen to have for the last little bit in here because it's so much easier to work with and up here is going to be low current anyway. The printer is the largest draw of anything and it's 400 watts and that's only used occasionally. And then the uh, security system will be on 24 7 now I sort of kept that secret but with the large power inverter uh, drawing 200 watts 120 or more watts at night 24 7 uh, well whenever it was turned on that is I did not have enough power to run the surveillance system uh, full-time so a lot of people have been asking and I have avoided the question because obviously having a security system that's not on is not going to protect you but we have had vandalism here I didn't talk about it because nobody wants to hear the drama uh, and some people actually believe I I make it all up just to stir up views which is not true because it doesn't help the views it actually hurts anyway um there still has been vandalism and so that's part of the reason this has become a uh, priority project up on the list so that we can run the security system uh, full time. Alright, I gotta get some screws. It's really hot and humid up here so I'm not thinking clear. I gotta get the screws to put this in. What I've got is the metal outlet box. They're normally an outdoor waterproof box and I drill two holes in it to go into the stud of the wall and then um, I can screw it on so I'll be right back okay I got my two screws it's awkward running around here up here I'm sure people have been wondering but it's not that bad I mean I get around I'm sitting here I'm comfortable it's okay so now this is going to go up here. Right into the stud. And then uh, when I put up the paneling, it's just a matter of adjusting that. Not a big deal. No, that's solid, really secure. And that's why I chose to use this type of a system. Okay, that wire is there, so now I've got to tighten these. Um, later I'm going to branch off, once I put up the divider wall of the workshop to divide it off from the living room, then I'm going to branch off into this box and run another wire over into the center uh, room upstairs what used to be the catwalk area the new extension room I might 
Now that I see how much I got here, this is a thinner wire. I might end up one day just uh, readjusting this a little shorter, but it's easier wire to work with. So much easier to work with, this wire. So much better. Again, I am not an electrician. I'm just doing, putting this together. It's really easy. I mean, make sure you got your white on the, 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 the black goes on the colored uh, screw. The white goes on the silver or white screw. And the bare copper ground goes on the green screw. So it's pretty simple. I just make sure I get my wires on there right. Why? I'm recording. What do you want? So I'll just screw these down tight. This 14 gauge wire is so much nicer to work with. Such a relief compared to that heavy 12 gauge. Big difference. And uh, I was told I did not need the 14 gauge, or the uh, 12 gauge, it's a 20 amp line I was told. The 12 gauge wire is a 20 amp line and I don't have to have 20 amp line if I'm not running 20 amps. Um, this is a 600 watt line from the power inverter, so that's all it's going to run through here, 600 watts max at any given time, so I'm not, I don't need that heavy wire, so I don't have to stress about it, about dealing with um, the stiff, stiff wire. It was hard to work with, but I happen to have it, I got it from a friend, um, who does clean outs and he had this massive roll of wire and I made him a good deal or he made me a good deal so I had it and I only had um, 15 feet of this 14 gauge so you know you do what you can do well there's that I'm gonna have to go out now and hook up the wire to the inverter and hope that I did everything right and if so then we will have AC power upstairs in the and downstairs in the kitchen in the tiny house on wheels AC power just plug in the uh, plug in the stuff and run very very nice now this doesn't interfere with my printer because uh, the paper comes out right here so that's perfectly fine nothing in the way happiness here we go now we're going to go outside and wire that up outside. We'll see you out there. All right, everybody, now I'm outside. By the way, the water pump is going to be moved. That was just because we moved it up from up here, then over here, and then we decided to finally just wait and see where things are going to turn out before we put it in its, in its final resting place. I'm not leaving the water pump by the power inverter, so don't worry. I did see that in the comments. A lot of people were worried about that. And it's not going to stay there. Now I'm going to shut off the inverter so that there's no uh, possibility of hurting myself. Now I've got the, I've got, I fed the wire through the plug that I'm going to use here. Now I've got to stick the wires into their respective slots and tighten that down. And then I'll have to reassemble this whole device. I can need a flat head. There's my flat. Better grip with flat screwdrivers on these electrical connections. Way better. And I do want this to be strong and sturdy. No, the colored one is black. 
and the silver want to be uh, white. There's a stiff, stiff, stiff wire I'm dealing with here. Really stiff to deal with. The difference between 12 and 14, 14 gauge single strand wire is uh, or solid wire. It's a big difference in handling it. There will be that. Make sure I put the black on the colored, the white on the silver, and the copper wire on the green. a little too short here so I want to see if I can uh, pinch them in some to get them inside that case the housing then the housing goes on screws back in very very soon we are going to have AC power inside the tiny house on wheels so I'm gonna reassemble this plug and we'll go check it out okay I've got the plug inserted I'm going to turn on the inverter and I'm going to go inside and see if we have power inside the tiny house on wheels. Okay everybody, oh here's a simple test. Let's see, I've had this lamp up here forever and uh, there's no real value in that, it's just a little light bulb. I don't even know if this lamp works, but let's plug this in. and see if it turns on that would mean we would have AC power in a tiny house on wheels if the bulb works if it's a good example ah we have power we have power in a tiny house on wheels and there it is everybody ah the outlet works I'm gonna go test the other one just to be sure all right, everybody, right here I plugged in my laptop and this lamp, which I'm finishing a review for. I just I just switched on the power to the lamp and we'll turn it on. And I wanna put that at medium height uh, brightness. And here we have power in the tiny house on wheels. We are looking good. So I'm gonna plug in my surveillance system and leave that running full time and uh, I've got AC power in the tiny house. It feels really good. I am happy. So there you go, everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Out. Oh. Hey, Melanie. What's for lunch? Melanie lost her voice. What's <laughs> for lunch? Macaroni. Really? I smell it upstairs. It smells good. Well, spoiler alert. Melanie is plugging her laptop in to charge and uh, right now the kitchen is the only um, outlet she has available downstairs because we're still working but I'll uh, give you a summary here um, this will be a separate video which you may have seen already but anyway the upstairs office is wired and there's uh, wiring in the tiny house on wheels I still have some more work to do but I've got to get some more 14 gauge wire and uh, I've been working on this. I just finished the wiring. So now we're going to go and look around the property and see what's going on with uh, the weather and the solar power. It's 91 degrees out, 47% humidity, which is not too bad outside, but it's 80 degrees in, 74% humidity, which is very uncomfortable. Uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, as I said, I just finished wiring up the AC. 
uh, electricity in the tiny house in Wales. So that is a entirely separate video. I figured it'd be good for you guys, for anybody interested, uh, to keep that separate. So let's go see what the solar is looking like. No sun at the off-grid homestead. Looks like it's going to rain. I think it's supposed to, but then again, every single day they say it's going to rain and then it doesn't. So I guess they rather play it safe. I heard a powerful noise out here. That's the old inverter. Uh, Chris is charging up some stuff out here using the high power outlets. Um, I've got the little inverter wired up to the house and uh, all is well and running happy. Now I've got here the uh, battery bank where 13.7 uh, volts pulling in 12 amps, 165 watts on the TriStar charge controller. Let's see what the uh, other one is looking at. It only shows amps. We're pulling in 7 amps on the uh, Renogy charge controller. So we're pulling in uh, close to 20 amps total with the two sets of solar panels at, uh, in a cloudy condition. So that's fairly decent. It's, it's, we're surviving. We'll be okay. And indoors we got two laptops charging. So quite a bit of power being drawn out of the battery bank right now. But we're doing all right. Chris, what's going on out here? Clean, give them the brush hogs and some more brush. They love that stuff. They yeah. love the trees. And been mucking out the stalls for us. Yep. Thank you very much. No problem. Chris loves hanging out by the animals and cleaning up the goats and caring for them. And they're happy. Look yep. at the tails wagging. Hey, goats. Yep. Hey, girls. They love people. Yep, they're very happy. Well, everybody, sudden rainstorm. Heavy. Heavy, heavy rain. I like it. It's really coming down hard and we need the water badly. Hey everybody, Melanie from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project and she's got a survival knife. Why don't you cut her finger off? Baby cat. Baby cat is excited because she got a box. Mm. This came from Amazon so I have no idea what we got here. Go ahead. Try not to cut off any limbs, please. Why? <laughs> Why? Because I like you how you are. What do we have in a box today, Melanie? <laughs> huh? Come on, I want to see. Oh, I'm gonna put this back because it's scary. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Oh, what's this? Oh, nice! I'm gonna be reading that tonight. The home creamery. Let me see. Make your own fresh dairy products, recipes for butter, yogurt, sour cream, cream fresh, fresh, whatever, cream cheese, ricotta, and more. I will be using wow. that tonight. That is nice. Oh, so perfect. We're going to be experimentally trying to use up some uh, milk products that we have here. Come on, maybe get your boxes here. Maybe get maybe. a box. Oh, where's the knife? Oh, you want the knife back. Here you go. Come on, baby cat, take your box. Don't worry, the paper isn't gonna kill you. Come on, there you go. There you go, take your box. Oh, no oh, baby's happy. Mm. Baby's happy. What do we got, Melanie? <laughs> oh, oh. oh! A butter churn, that's beautiful! I didn't know they still made them! Oh, open it up, Melanie. Oh, that's so nice looking! Oh, careful. That's scary. Yeah, hold it by the bottom. Can you pick it up and hold it up, please, so I, we can see it on camera? Oh, that's so nice looking. Wow. Well, I don't know who sent this. Is there any um, label in There's nothing, is there? Mm. Well, whoever said this, sent this, thank you so much. This is great. Melanie. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, everybody. Talk to you later. We got some work to do tonight. <laughs>
It's just like lemon. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's got instructions and everything. This is going to be some fun. So you can make a butter using We're going to make our own butter, Melanie. Yes. Yep, we're going to make our own butter. That's All right, awesome. everybody. Talk to you later. I'm going to dig into this book right now. <laughs>